In the beginning, there was darkness. And then, the universe exploded into light. For eons, humanity has gazed upward, hearts pounding with questions as old as time. We mapped the stars, spun legends from their light, and dreamed of reaching beyond. Each generation built new eyes to pierce the cosmic veil, telescopes that stretched our vision to infinity. Now, we stand at the edge of a new era. The James Webb Space Telescope, our golden time machine, unfolds its mirrors to the unknown. Floating a million miles from home, it hunts for the first light, the oldest secrets, the birth of everything. Webb doesn't just look, it listens, in infrared, to the whispers of ancient stars and newborn worlds. In a single image it can reveal the dawn of time, rewrite the story of the universe and show us where we came from. Tonight, the cosmos calls louder than ever. And for the first time, we can answer. A postcard from our next-door neighbor in the cosmic ocean. Not Mars, not Jupiter, an exoplanet, not just any exoplanet. The one we've dreamed about, orbiting the closest star to our sun. So what is this neighbor we're so excited about? Its name is Proxima b. It orbits a star called Proxima Centauri. The name Proxima is Latin for next to or nearest. Proxima Centauri is the closest star to our sun in the Milky Way. It's part of the Alpha Centauri trio. Alpha Centauri a Alpha Centauri b. Proxima Centauri is the faint, cool runt of the litter. A red dwarf much smaller and dimmer than our sun. Proxima b is the planet orbiting this star. The b means it was the first planet discovered there. Proxima c, Proxima d, and so on. Discovered in 2016, Proxima b instantly became the most famous exoplanet nearby. Why? Because of its address. It's the closest exoplanet to Earth. Close in cosmic terms, but still mind-bogglingly far. It's our most accessible target for study. This is our cosmic front porch. So, it's close. Big deal, right? Well, it is a very big deal. The reason scientists are practically falling over themselves with excitement for Proxima b isn't just its location, it's what that location implies. Proxima b orbits its star within something called the habitable zone. This is sometimes called the Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, just right for liquid water to potentially exist on a planet's surface. And as far as we know, liquid water is the one non-negotiable ingredient for life as we understand it. Think about Earth. Our planet sits in the sun's habitable zone. We're far enough away that our oceans don't boil off into space, but we're close enough that they don't freeze into a solid block of ice. Proxima b orbits its tiny cool red dwarf star at the perfect distance to receive a similar amount of energy. It's much much closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun, completing a full orbit, a year, in just 11 Earth days. But because Proxima Centauri is so dim and cool, this tight embrace places Proxima b squarely in that tantalizing life-friendly zone. A rocky world close to home in the habitable zone, that's the trifecta for exoplanet hunters. This combination of factors makes Proxima b a laboratory for testing our biggest ideas about life in the universe. Let's dive into what we know and what we don't know about Proxima b. Based on the data we've collected, we believe the planet is slightly more massive than Earth, at least 1.17 times our planet's mass. This suggests it's almost certainly a rocky world, a terrestrial planet like Earth Venus Mars, not a gas giant like Jupiter. You could, in theory, stand on its surface. But what would it be like? For starters, very different from a walk in the park on Earth. Gravity would be a little stronger, but the real differences would be dramatic and alien. Proxima b is likely tidally locked. Like the moon always showing one face to Earth, Proxima b probably always shows one face to its star. A world of permanent extremes. One hemisphere, perpetual daylight, under a motionless, dim red sun. The other hemisphere, endless freezing night. Life might be confined to the Terminator line, the twilight zone where temperatures are moderate and liquid water could exist in rivers and lakes. So how did the James Webb Space Telescope manage to take a direct picture of this faint little world? It's honestly an incredible feat of astronomical prowess. Kind of like trying to spot a firefly sitting next to a colossal searchlight from miles away. The star, Proxima Centauri, is billions of times brighter than the planet, Proxima b. Normally, the star's overwhelming glare would completely wash out the faint, reflected light from the planet. Trying to see the planet directly is nearly impossible with conventional methods. It's a challenge that has stumped astronomers for decades, really consigning our views of exoplanets, artists' impressions, and indirect data points. To overcome this, Webb used a combination of two revolutionary pieces of technology, a coronagraph and its unparalleled infrared sensitivity. 
A coronagraph is essentially a tiny, precision-engineered mask inside the telescope that is positioned to block out the direct light from the star. Think of it as holding your hand up to block the sun's glare so you can see something next to it. Webb's coronagraphs are exquisitely precise, capable of blotting out the light from Proxima Centauri without obscuring the area immediately around it where the planet is known to orbit. This is the first critical step, getting the star out of the picture. But even with the star's light blocked, the planet itself is incredibly faint. This is where Webb's other superpower comes in, its sensitivity to infrared light. Planets, even rocky ones like Proxima b, have a faint heat signature. They glow dimly in the infrared spectrum. Capturing a direct image is just the beginning of the story. For astronomers, the real excitement comes from what we can learn from that light. The study of exoplanets is a bit like cosmic archaeology. We are sifting through ancient light to uncover the secrets of distant worlds. Before the era of direct imaging, our methods were entirely indirect. We were like detectives who could never visit the crime scene. One of the most common methods is the transit method, where we watch a star for a tiny, periodic dip in its brightness. This dip tells us that a planet is passing in front of the star, blocking a little bit of its light. Another clever technique is the radial velocity method, which is actually how Proxima b was discovered in the first place. As a planet orbits its star, its gravity gives the star a tiny little wobble. We can't see this wobble directly, but we can detect it in the star's light. As the star wobbles toward us, its light is slightly shifted to the blue end of the spectrum. As it wobbles away, its light is shifted to the red. This is the Doppler effect, the same phenomenon that makes an ambulance siren sound higher as it comes toward you and lower as it moves away. By measuring these tiny shifts, we can deduce the presence of a planet and even estimate its mass. These indirect methods are powerful. They have allowed us to discover thousands of exoplanets, giving us a statistical sense of the planetary census in our galaxy. We've learned that planets are incredibly common, and that small rocky worlds likely outnumber giant planets like Jupiter. That single fuzzy dot of light from Proxima b is a treasure trove of information. The next step for the science team is to perform a technique called spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the art of breaking light into its colors. Much like a prism makes a rainbow, every element and molecule absorbs and emits light at very specific wavelengths. Those patterns make a unique spectral barcode of dark and bright lines. By analyzing Proxima b's spectral barcode we can infer its atmospheric makeup. This is how we search for clues of life from 4 light years away. The first thing scientists will look for is the barcode for water vapor. Finding abundant water vapor in a habitable zone would be monumental. They will also search for other gases like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen. But the holy grail is the search for biosignatures. Biosignatures are gases hard to explain without life. On Earth, abundant oxygen comes from billions of years of photosynthesis. Without life, oxygen would react with rocks and vanish. Finding similar oxygen on Proxima b would be a paradigm-shifting clue. It wouldn't be definitive proof, but it would be the most tantalizing clue humanity has found. Scientists will also hunt for methane coexisting with oxygen, a chemically unstable combination. They'll look for nitrous oxide, the microbe-produced laughing gas. Spectroscopy lets us inventory a distant atmosphere without leaving home. Each photon collected by Webb is a messenger, carrying a chemical fingerprint across interstellar space waiting for us to decode it. So, what have we learned from this first groundbreaking image? The initial results are just starting to be analyzed, but the team has shared some preliminary findings that are already shaping our understanding of this world. First and foremost, the image confirms that Proxima b is a distinct, cohesive body. The brightness of the dot measured in different infrared colors has allowed scientists to make a preliminary estimate of its temperature and size. These measurements line up with a rocky planet, a terrestrial world, not a mini-Neptune. Crucially, the data suggest the presence of an atmosphere. Brightness changes across infrared wavelengths don't match a bare, airless rock. A bare rock would have a very specific thermal signature, but Proxima b's light is more complex, filtered and re-radiated by a blanket of gas. We don't know the composition yet, but an atmosphere surviving its flare-prone star is a huge victory. That implies a magnetic field or other protective mechanisms keeping the air from being stripped away. The image also hints at the planet's climate. Observed over several hours, astronomers measured subtle brightness changes. Those variations could be rotation, revealing surface features or shifting cloud patterns. 
Preliminary data suggests a big temperature gap between the day side and the night side, as expected for a tidally locked world. Yet the night side isn't as cold as an airless model would predict, which supports atmosphere-driven heat circulation from day to night. This is just the first glimpse. The team has more web time approved follow-up. Next, deep spectroscopic analysis to dissect the planet's light and hunt for specific molecules. Is there water? Is there carbon dioxide? Is there methane? Is there oxygen or some other biosignature? This single fuzzy dot has become the focus of our search for life. Our pale blue dot moment, now a pale red dot, open a new frontier. This single image of Proxima b, a faint speck of light from our nearest interstellar neighbor, is more than just a scientific achievement. It is a profound moment for humanity. For all of our history, the question, are we alone, has been a matter of pure speculation. But now, for the first time, we have the technology to look at the answer directly, to sniff the very air of a potentially habitable world. The discovery of an atmosphere on Proxima b marks the beginning of a new chapter. The forthcoming analysis of its composition will change our story. Regardless of what we find, the answer will be transformative. The universe is speaking to us in whispers of light. For the first time, we are learning how to listen.